Hey, we're Casey and Lachlan. We're here on the Tyne River. In this video, we're going to take you through how we spent 48 hours in Newcastle. Let's go! So before we get started, uh, if you're new to the channel and not one of our two subscribers, uh, just over two months ago we packed up our bag in Australia uh, and set off on a one-way trip to Europe. Our goal for the next about 11 months is to explore as much of Europe as we can while balancing our remote jobs to fund our adventure. We're starting our tour of Newcastle here on the quayside near the Tyne Bridge. Starting from the Millennium Bridge, there are actually seven iconic bridges that cross the River Tyne in only two kilometres. Three of the most well-known are the Tyne Bridge, the Millennium Bridge and the Swing Bridge. So the Millennium Bridge, way in the background over there, to let uh, boats come through the Tyne, uh, opens like this, like a, like a blinking mm -hmm. eye. And then the Tyne Bridge just above us here is super tall, so that's not a problem. And then the Swing Bridge that we're on right now pivots like in the middle, like this. When the bridge was built in the 1870s, it was actually the largest swing bridge in the world. From here, you can also get an amazing view of the Glasshouse Music Centre. The next stop on day one was to head into the city centre and explore some of Newcastle's iconic attractions. On the way into town, we passed the longest remaining section of the Newcastle Town Wall. So just behind me here is the remains of Newcastle Town Wall. This was built in the 13th and 14th century and was largely demolished in the 19th century. Just in front of me, you can actually see the entrance to Chinatown, just there. And this right here is the remains of Ever Tower, which was one of 17 towers that uh, formed part of the wall in the 13th century. There are still some remaining segments of the town wall all throughout the city. So we will be on the lookout for those over the next few days. We then headed towards Grey Street where you can see Grey's Monument. The monument was built in 1838 in recognition of Charles Earl Grey, the Prime Minister of the UK from 1830 to 1834. In particular, it celebrates the passing of the Great Reform Act of 1932, but I know what you're thinking. What does he have to do with the tea? Well, the famous Earl Grey tea was named after him because he popularised it during his time as Prime Minister. I feel like we should go... <laughs> Should we go get an Earl Grey tea? Yeah. <laughs> so we're here at the top of Grey Street near the Earl Grey Monument. Um, and from where we are, we have a really great view of the rest of the street. On Grey Street, you can see the famous Theatre Royale, as well as the entrance to the Central Arcade. Inside the Central Arcade, you can find incredible early 20th century stained glass and tile work and some of the shops inside the arcade have been here since 1908. On the way to the main attraction of day one, we passed through Granger Market, an amazing indoor marketplace with a range of unique food, clothing and homemade craft stalls. We didn't hang around long though because we were excited to visit Newcastle's namesake. We are here at Newcastle Castle and we just learned how Newcastle got its name. I'm going to tell you and this is take number six so bear with me. Uh, during the Roman Empire along the Hadrian's Wall there was a fort and then uh, in the 1100s the son of William the Conqueror built a Newcastle here uh, and that's how the town got its name. He called it the Newcastle upon Tyne and we're about to go in and check it out. So straight away I was wrong. 10, 1080 it was built so not the 1100s. <laughs> Tickets into the castle are only £12.50, but if you don't want to see the inside, you can still explore the outside for free. Between 2011 and 2015, the castle was renovated and you can see some of the most stark examples here between the old bricks and the new bricks.
The inside of the castle is beautifully presented with fascinating examples of ancient plumbing and architecture. But if nothing else, the top of the castle offers an amazing view of the city and the River Tyne. Alright, so that's the end of day one, but there's still so much to see and do, and we'll be up bright and early tomorrow morning to fit it all in. The first stop on day two was breakfast at the Dispensary Coffee House, which honestly serves some of the best pancakes we've ever had. After that, it was onto the Newcastle Discovery Museum. This is a great place to come if you have kids, but we had a great time as well. The history of Newcastle is so tightly linked to the River Tyne, especially when discussing the shipbuilding industry and trade. You'd have to walk through the museum with your eyes closed not to get a sense of how deeply Newcastle's identity is linked to the river. We're here in front of the Newcastle Cathedral uh, and we're about to go inside and check it out. But we actually just noticed that we're on Mosley Street and we just came from the Discovery Museum and we learned that Mosley Street was actually the first street to be lit by incandescent light bulb. The first thing that really captured our attention was the Lantern Tower. There is also this short tour around the grounds where you can read about some of the cathedral's interesting history. For example, the Lantern Tower is actually another link to the town's maritime history because it used to be used to guide ships entering the River Tyne. The inside of the cathedral is equally as breathtaking, and the highlight for us had to be the incredible stained glass windows and intricate detail on the marble and woodwork. At the rear of the cathedral you can actually see one of Newcastle's more quirky attractions, the Vampire Rabbit of Newcastle. If we're ever stuck for something to do in a new city, Atlas Obscura is usually one of our first points for finding weird and wonderful attractions like this. One of the last stops for day two was at the Lytton Phil, or Literary and Philosophical Society of Newcastle. It's an amazing library hidden right in the heart of Newcastle and is actually the largest independent library outside of London. We spent just about an hour here checking out the collection and highly recommend checking it out if you're passing by. So just behind me here is actually a cocktail bar. So we're gonna head in and have a drink while I let future Lachlan tell you why it's so interesting. Yeah, hi there. The building that this cocktail bar is in is actually a late Victorian era public toilet. It was abandoned and then later turned into this unique bar. It is super cozy and serves truly delicious cocktails. This was a super fun and unique way to wrap up our time in Newcastle. We really hope you've enjoyed exploring Newcastle with us. We've had an absolutely amazing time here. So thanks to all the friendly Geordies that we've met along the way. If you've enjoyed this video, we really think you'll love checking out some of our other videos and the videos we have planned over the next few months. Some of the next stops on our adventure through Europe include the Scottish Highlands, Belfast, Dublin, Amsterdam, Brussels, Switzerland and Vienna.